Hi, my name is James. I'm going to be talking about installation and operation of the Amazon grid tie inverters and solar power systems. Okay, we're going to start at the solar panels first. We've got six 300 watt solar panels here, and um, these two here are tied in parallel, those two are tied in parallel, and the other last two are tied in parallel. And I just go through three quarter inch aluminum flexible conduit down to the inverters. Okay, from the solar panels, it comes down the wall in the flexible conduit. It comes down this way. Two of the solar panels are connected up to this inverter. Two are connected to this inverter and two are connected right here. From the inverter, it just goes out in the power cord right here through a watt meter. And then the watt meter is plugged into the outside outlet of my house. These are the solar panel Z mounting brackets. Most people mount these solar panel and a deck type of screw going into the roof on this side right here. Um, I'm using actually two of them together. I mount it this way and then the deck screw right here so that I get more ventilation under the solar panel. Okay, on mine I'm gonna mount Z bracket directly onto the roof. You need to check with your local uh, area codes and the uh, building and safety to find out what your exact code is. But this is how I do it in my area. And so all you have to do is just put wet patch all over the bottom. We're gonna get a, a roof replacement pretty soon. So I'm just gonna show this as an example of what to do. So I've got six pairs of these Z mounting brackets. What you do is you put the wet patch under all six corners of it and then set it down. So all you do is just screw it in. Okay, and I've got two of the 300 watt solar panels in parallel positive and negative are going to be connected in parallel with each other and they're at 32 volts so instead of 300 watts I'm going to get 600 watts and so I've got an MC4 Y branch connector so all I do is connect up on the negative side of one solar panel and negative side of the other solar panel and these um, MC4 connectors are real nice they're real easy to use then I just plug into the negative and this part's going down to the inverter and then on the positive side of the Y branch connector, I plug that into one solar panel, into the other one, and it just puts these in parallel. On the flexible conduit right here, what you do is you use one whole strap, and these will mount these onto the wall. And on this side right here, just to make a smooth transition, what I did is EMT to flex, three quarter inch. They just threw, screw into the conduit but make sure and check with your building and safety in your local area. If you're bringing it up to code, you want to follow what's required of your area. So we have the 8 gauge MC4 solar wires coming through the flexible conduit right here. And these here, you can just push these through. I made it 8 gauge because I'm going 25 feet. Um, if the wire is not thick enough and then it's going to lose some of the power from the solar coming to the inverter. So I made it 8 gauge. If you're a shorter distance you could go 10 gauge or even go 12 gauge depending on the power level and how far you are away from the solar panels. The MC4 cables need to be stripped and a lug put on there. This is the lug I use on mine. This is for 8 gauge wire and it's got a 1 quarter inch hole. I'm going to give a parts list at the end of this video and I'll give a description of all the parts I used in my setup. So I strip this around here and I pull this off of here. And I put the lug in the clamp and it's sort of got a notch there and it notches onto the wire and I push the wire in as far as I can make a really tight connection and then crimp it really tight. Okay, I always verify polarity on these. I mean, I know red's going to be positive, but it's good if you're not sure. You know, down here I had to use two black wires, but make sure positive goes to positive, negative to negative. Make sure solar panel is disconnected when you hook these. Hook it up on this side right here. I put the washer and just screw it on there. This box right here, this isn't really necessary. I know people who've actually put these inverters underneath the eave of the house. It just goes inverter, MC4 cable, straight up to the solar panels, and then an extension cord plugged into an outlet. This grid tie inverter 
is rated for 1,000 watts, input of 22 up to 50 volts DC. Even though it's rated at 1,000 watts, it's like a car. And never run a car at maximum speed. And so this one here, I wouldn't want to bring it up to 1,000 watts. Um, I'm, I've got two 300 watt solar panels and so that would be 600 watts is what it's rated for but I'm actually getting 450 watts so at 450 watts current is calculated power divided by voltage so 32 volts coming in 600 well actually 450 watts so that's about 14 amps that's a lot of current coming through here the, the grid tie inverter has actually got intelligent control where if the power on the line is disconnected and then the grid tie inverter turns off. And that's a safety feature and the power companies actually require that because they don't want you to keep putting power onto the line if their grid goes down and a technician's working on it. And that's also got the phase and the load automatically synced with the line input. So that's the way it works as you're putting DC in here, it's putting AC out on this side. And if your house is using all the power out of this, then it just goes to your house. If your house is not using all the power of this, and, and, and say this one here is 450 watts at maximum power in the middle of the day as, as the sun's shining bright. Um, if your house is not using 450 watts, this is gonna put power back on the grid. Putting it back onto the grid is a good thing, and I have a friend of the, uh, who has these, and he's, he's got two of them at two different houses, and his, his meter actually spins backwards. So as he puts power back in the grid, he's, he's, he's actually, he actually got a, a credit of $6 on one month because he was putting power back onto the grid. The problem is, is that it really requires a net meter, it's called, and if you don't have a net meter at your house, or also one of the old-fashioned meters where it spins and it's got the motor, um, a lot of the newer digital meters, especially the F9 meters, do not do net metering. So the problem of that, it's thing that happens, is that if your house is not using all the power this is putting out, and it goes back onto the grid, instead of giving you credit for it, they actually charge you, the meter's counting up, as the power is going through the meter because the meter is just seeing power go one direction or the other. It doesn't matter which way it's going. And so if you'd like a net meter at your house, if your meter is actually counting up instead of counting down, you'd have to talk to your local power company and get the, all the proper authorizations and approvals by them. So my house doesn't have net metering. Unfortunately, I found that out after I installed this. And so because I'm putting out about 1200, 1300 watts in the middle of the day. On sometimes, if my air is not on, I'm actually putting power back in the line. And so I installed a circuit over here. It's a relay circuit where if the air conditioning is on, see both these green LEDs right now, if the air conditioning's on, and then both of the bottom inverters turn on, and if the air conditioner is not on, they turn off. And so I'm actually wasting power if the AC is not on. But in summertime, I'm usually running AC most of the day. So as long as the AC is running, both of these relays close right here and then power my system inverter. These second two relays also turn on both of the bottom inverters. And these ones are also connected up to other power sources. And so if the AC goes on, it turns on the bottom two inverters. If my extra power sources at the house are, are turned on, then it also turns on the inverter. This is a real hassle, and I'd really like to go to net metering, but this is what I'm doing in the meantime, just so I don't waste money of the solar panels I install. So these inverters I've got inside of a cement mixing tub. I drilled holes in the side, I put screens. It's important having these enclosed in a clean area because it's got intake fan exhaust on the other side. You wanna keep them clean but then also it's got to have ventilation on it too. And so this is aluminum shielding. It's used on roofing. I put these in back of them and I used a conductor compound. It's this white grease right here. So it transfers heat off of this. Electronic lasts longer if you keep them cooled. And so that's all I did. It's just a cement mixing tub. Mounted this on a piece of plywood, the plywood to the wall, and then aluminum flashing in back of it just as a heat sink, but also as a safety thing if these things overheated. So grid tie inverters like this are really plug and play. You just plug them in 
and everything syncs up automatically. The output's kind of interesting. You plug this into a wall socket, but mine, I plug into a power meter. So I just plug it in right here, and then this one plugs into an extension cord. So I put it right here. This kilowatt meter I bought separately, and so this is really cool because these will measure power if it's going out this way or also if it's going back onto the line. And all you do is just plug it in and it's got all these different scales on here. So if I want to measure volts, it's saying 123. So it's measuring line voltage of my house. It tells me how many amps and see it's got zero amps. I've got this off. It's too noisy with the fans on if I'm recording. I usually leave it on this scale, which is the watt scale. And as I mentioned, it goes up to about 450 watts in the middle of the day. The frequency it's got there, and then this here is how many watts it's used over a period of time. Every time you unplug it, it resets. So I just unplugged it so it reset to zero. Here's a quick rundown circuit diagram of my grid tie solar system. So up here we've got two of the 300 watt solar panels. They're in parallel at the 32 volts DC, which comes down here. Um, current is calculated by power divided by the voltage, so it's actually 450 I've got at the max power, so 450 divided by 32, so 14 amps DC coming into the grid tie inverter, comes out as AC, it goes into the watt meter right here, and then it plugs into the AC outlet. Now on this one, and also this one up here, I've got a relay circuit, which disables them if the power is not being used. Also, another quick note is that on these plugs right here, it's best if you plug these into outlets which are on different circuit breakers instead of having everything, all three of these, if you use three, um, on the same circuit breaker. And so it's way of doing that is, is turn off circuit breakers until you see power in these turn off. And also it'd be nice if you plug them in on different phase. You've got 240 coming into the house usually, and so you can measure the hot of each side of the circuit breaker. And if you measure hot of this circuit breaker up to this circuit breaker, if it measures 240, then it's different phase and it's different outlets. Um, if you measure and it's zero, that means it's on the same phase. Here's the relay circuit diagram for my grid tie auto disable. And so I get a signal off my AC heater fan motor. So anytime heater or the AC is on, it's gonna put a 120 volt AC signal out to both of these relays. And it's normally open. When it gets that signal, it'll close this on this one. It'll close this one here. So it closes this circuit and this circuit and the grid tie inverter is turned on anytime it sees 120 volts off of the grid. So it turns that on, activates it, and um, I've even seen some people, instead of plugging these into a wall socket, they'll plug these directly into the breaker box, just wire it into the breaker box instead of having to go through the house wiring.